Hello, my name is Li Hao. Welcome to Advent of Code 2020. Advent of Code 2020 is a series of mini programming challenges every day on the Advent calendar. From day one to 25th of December, every day we're going to have one programming challenge. And in that programming challenge, you have two parts, which each part, if you solve, you get one gold star each. Right, so today we're going to do day 10 which if this is your first time watching this video, meaning that you have missed out a lot, link on top, click them. You need to watch day one to day nine. I've recorded all of them, okay? So let's get back to business. So day 10, uh, adapter array, okay? So, while patched into aircraft data ports, you discover weather forecasts of a massive tropical storm before you can figure out whether it will impact your vacation plans. However, your device suddenly turns off. Well, its battery is dead. <sighs> well, you need to plug it in. And there's only one problem. The charging outlet near your seat produces the wrong number of jolts. Well, always prepared. You make a list of all the Joltage adapters in your bag. Well, each of your, your Joltage adapters is rated for a specific output Joltage. Well, your puzzle input will be that. A given adapter can take an input 1, 2 or 3 Jolts lower than its rating and still produce its rated output Joltage. Well, in addition, your device has a built-in Joltage adapter rated for 3 Jolts higher than the highest rated adapter in your bag. If your adapter list is 396, well, your built-in adapter will be rated for 12 jolts. Well, treat the charging outlet near your seat as having an effective joltage rating 0. And since you have some time to kill, you might as well test all your adapters. Wouldn't want to get your results and realize you can't even charge your device. If you use every adapter in your bag, at once, what is the distribution of the voltage difference between the charging outlets, the adapters, and your device? For example, if this is uh, the, all the voltage ratings, uh, with this adapter, your built-in voltage adapter will be rated for 22 joules, which is the 3 joules higher than the highest rated adapter. Because adapters can only connect to a source 1 to 3 joules lower than its rating, in order to use every adapter, you need to choose them like this. Uh, the charging outlet is zero, right? So the only that can connect directly is one, two, three, uh, which is uh, so only one you have is an adapter rated jo one jolt, right? So the difference from one to the zero is one jolt. Or from one jolt, you're gonna choice is four jolt because um difference of it uh, because that that's the next adapter that you have, right? So. Uh, 1 plus 3 is um, 1, oh, sorry, 4 minus 1 will be 3 jolts, right? Difference of 3. From 4, you can go to 5, uh, and 6 and 7. So you because you want to use all, you're going to use the 5, uh, and then you use the 6, and you use the 7. So 4 to 5 is 1 difference, difference of 1. 6 to 7 is difference of 1. 7, uh, yeah. And then uh, 7, the next you move to 10 jolts. That's the next one you have. Um, and then so on and so forth. I think you get it, right? So in, in the example, if you use all the every adapters, you're going to find all the differences. We find that there's uh, seven differences of one jolt and there's five differences of three jolts, right? Um, so uh, after you find the chain that uses all the adapters, um, count the joltage difference between the num charging outlets and then what's the number of one jolt difference? Just multiplied by a number of three jolt differences, right? So, for example, in this case, I'm guessing that if uh, you have 22, 22 differences of one jolt and ten differences of three jolts, uh, your answer will be twenty two times ten. Got it, right? Let's look at the puzzle and let's do it. Let's save this input, and we're gonna move this file to day ten. I'm going to create a code day 10 and we are going to code day 10 
Okay. So first thing first, let's look at the output. Uh, or, sorry, let's look at the input. We have a list of numbers, right? So we're going to read this. We're going to import the file system and we're going to read the file. Okay, content. And because it's a list of numbers, we're going to, in every line, we're going to split by new line and we're going to map with number. Numbers, right? Adapters. Right, so we're gonna if we're gonna use all of them, and I believe we can use all of them, uh, and we're gonna use from the smallest to the largest. That means that actually we need to sort the adapters, right? Uh, I I believe these numbers are not sorted, so we're gonna sort this. So adapters dot sort a b a minus b, right? This will sort the numbers in ascending order, right? If you don't pass this uh sorter sort function then uh, JavaScript will actually sort it uh, in terms of the string value of the numbers, which is uh, 1, is next to 10, is next to 100. Uh, whereas, and then after comes 2 and 20 and 200, right? And that's not what we want. We want the number value in exciting order. That's why we have this sort function. Um, so after we sort it, and because it's, um, yeah, sorry. I can't remember what I'm trying to say. Okay, so once we sort it, uh, we also don't forget uh, the sockets, which is rated zero, and our device, which is rated uh, three joules uh, greater than the largest one. All right, we're gonna add them into the list of adapters as well, because we we also need to calculate the difference in in those. Uh, in between, right? So adapters dot um, length is one adapters plus three. Okay. So now we have list of devices, sockets, and jolts, uh, adapters. We're gonna find the difference in between the numbers, right? So let's i equals to zero and i less than adapters dot length minus one i plus plus what we're gonna do is we're gonna get the difference equals to adapters i plus one minus adapters i right so we're gonna get the difference in each of the numbers and if difference is one we're gonna count okay, count num uh div one goes to zero and count div is three goes to zero right so if the div one then we're gonna plus plus and else if difference goes to three we we'll count div three plus plus okay so once we get that. What we are to do next is we are going to count we're gonna get the multiplication, the product of these two numbers, which is count div one times count div three. Right, and let's run the code. Oh, sorry. Should be let. Ah, my bad. Okay, let's run. Two, three, four, six. I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna paste it in the answer and that's right. Okay, part two. To completely determine whether you have enough adapters, you need to figure out how many different ways that can be arranged. Every arrangement needs to connect to the charging outlet to a device. Or well, the previous rules when a about when adapters can successfully connect still apply. Uh, well, in this case, okay, so we we have like so every adapters can go one, two, or three different parts, right? So sometimes you can miss 
you like you can don't have to use adapter six uh, jolt of six jolt because five to seven is two still two jolt apart, right? And um, yeah, so four to six also you can do that because uh, you can skip the five because um, this is still two jolts apart. You can even skip six jolt because four to seven is three jolts apart, right? So given that charging outlets uh, are shown, okay, so another example, right? So the number of arrangement of this will be uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight different kind of arrangements, right? And some of the sample will have even more number of arrangements, right? So, uh, so what is the total number of distinct ways that you can arrange adapters to connect the charging outlet to your device? Right, so we need to find the number of different ways that we can charge. Okay, so, so let's see how we can do that. Right, so um, we don't need, okay, so we don't need all this anymore. And what we need to do next is that actually we're gonna find uh, number of uh, arrangements, right? That you can, you can use and we're gonna right now we're gonna use the index right so it's like uh we're gonna have a function called number of arrangements with the index what this means is that okay so i have an array of different kind of adapters like zero one two three four seven right uh how i'm gonna call this is that i will have a index of like zero uh, tell me how many arrangements I I I can make, right? So, uh, I, so what this will do is actually it will call an index of the next one, and the next one, and the next one, and see whether uh, if they are add up to, uh, if they are still within the range that I can do. Like, is it like one jot, two jot, or three jot apart? If they are, then I will get how many number of arrangements they can make. Uh, and then I'm gonna add all of them out, right? So the reason I use index is that so that I can refer to the next one easily by index plus one, instead of like uh, having number of uh, passing in the uh, jolt value in, then I, I wouldn't know where I am and I have to find out uh, what's the next up one jolt uh, adapter that I have. So um, here I'm gonna do a sum equals to zero. And we're gonna loop. So for let's uh next equals to index plus one. Uh while next is less than index. I think uh I think better if I use a while loop over here is that uh let's next equals to index plus one. Okay, while uh, adapters of next uh, minus adapters, oh, sorry, adapters dot um, index. So the, the next one they're pointing at minus this has to be less than three. Then we're gonna sum numbers of arrangement next right and after that we're gonna next next right because we are incrementing we also need to just be safe to check the next is less than adapters dot length right and we're gonna cons and i think that's it and we're gonna return next uh the sum right so keep calling this right then there must be a uh end case where we, we don't have to find the next adapter, which is in the case where if uh, index is equals to adapters dot length, right? So once you reach the end of the your device, when you reach the in device, which is the end of the list of adapters, uh, length minus one, uh, that means we um we find it and probably we we'll just return one because that is like one arrangement only, right? As long as you use it as one. So how many different kind of index that will call it will that will you will add up that sum, right? Um, so the answer will be to console out 
numbers of arrangement uh, with zero, right? Let's start with zero and then we're going to count the number of arrangements. Um, usually when you look at this kind of problems, right? Um, it, it seems to be going to be, um, uh, going to be calling number of arrangements a lot of times, uh, especially like, for example, in this case, zero called one and zero will call two and zero will call three, right? But one will also call two and one will also call three because they are still within a range. Uh, this means that actually we are calling uh, of index that is pointing to this uh, two joint adapters multiple times. And the number of arrangements you return is actually the same, right? So one way we can do is what we call a memoization, which is to remember the results of that. And we return the results immediately instead of having to compute for the uh, two jots, which is going to do a follow-up and going to call it recursively again. So uh, what we're going to do here is that we're going to create a memo, uh, which is um, an object. Um, we're going to save. So, okay, I think we call it, we use a map, which is safe, uh, slightly safer because the key itself can be numbers and it can be any primitives. Uh, or any, yeah, can be anything, right? Uh, it will be a reference to it, uh, but if you use an object, then you will cast it to a string. So um, over here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set, I'm going to check whether I have seen this index before. So if memo has index, I'm going to return the result memo that gets index. Or else um, we're going to, do everything and then before we return we're gonna set and remember this re uh, sum for the next time i'm gonna call this okay so we remember it and if we come again the same thing then we're gonna return the value immediately right so let's run this okay that's fast right so let me show you that if you don't have this memo how long does it take well, almost like forever, right? It's like almost forever, right? Let's, let's copy this answer and let's try and see whether it's the right answer. Yes, it's the right answer. And see how long it takes if you don't do memoization, right? Um, I'm going to leave it here and I'm going to say that this is the end of day 10. And so if you like this video, click thumbs up if you like it. And if you have any improvements you want to make, uh, tell me so that I can improve on, uh, comment down below. And that's all for day 10. If you want to watch um, day 11, 12, 13, please remember to subscribe my channel. So see ya.